Sure. I'm Tony DeQueer, the uh, Dean of the College of Music and Fine Arts. I've been a faculty member at Loyola for over 30 years and have had the opportunity to serve in this capacity many, many times. Um, this particular occasion is, uh, it, is very meaningful to me because I see the college at, a, at the crossroads. I see the college is, is, is really at the precipice of doing some very, very exciting things in the community, of, in the arts community. We've created a brand new design degree called the BD, the Bachelor of Design degree. This particular degree is very unique in that it is the only one of its kind in this part of the world, this part of the United States. We think we have a great opportunity to, to attract students, strong students, students who are interested in design from all over the country with this particular degree. We couple that degree, that degree in design, with our own Jesuit values of educating the whole, per educating the whole person, and we think we have a combination for success, especially with that degree. In the very near future, we hope to kick off or introduce another degree that has been in the hopper for many years, and that is the musical theater degree. Musical theater, as you know, lots of students in music have their first introduction to music as in musical theater in high schools. And over the years, in many recruiting trips that I've taken, students have always asked me, do you have musical theater? Well, my answer is yes, and my answer used to be yes and no. Yes in that, we had, we used to cobble a degree called a Bachelor of Music with Elective Studies, and we would tack on a minor in theater. Typically, students would get some theater training, they'd get their bona fide music training, and they would get some experience on stage in musical theater in the New Orleans community. This degree brings, it comes from the theater department, which is very, very exciting, so the kids get a, a real good dose of theater how to act on the stage, how to behave on stage, coupled with training with our very famous, if I might say, vo vocal, uh, vocal professors, voice professors. So we think we have a very, very good combination. Um, as you may or may not know, the School of Music, then the College of Music, has done many, many productions in musical theater. We did Fiddler on the Roof um, a number of years ago. We've done the Pirates of Penzance. We've done a number of things, and we will continue. So what we have is a collaborative effort between the School of Music and the Department of Theater Arts and Dance. Film has been, as, as many folks know in the New Orleans community, uh, New Orleans has been tab the Hollywood of the South, for example, and, and there's, there, not a day goes by where you cannot see the, the movie trucks parked along the street. So film has become a very, very important area for the development of the continued development of the city, both economically, socially. It has, it has created a, a very good vibe for, here, for the city of New Orleans in the area of film. We have always had, we've had for a number of years, a very strong music industry program. That music industry program, a part of it is morphed off into a, a new degree, uh, into the creation of a new degree in digital film. This was a natural, a natural byproduct of music industry in that uh, our students in music industry have the option of doing at least a, a, a concentration in film, that in, that in filmmaking, film directing, film editing, and we have added a few additional courses to create this particular degree in film. Another degree that has come out uh, primarily out of our music industry program is a degree called popular music, the popular music degree. For years, when I was recruiting students, they would ask, well, how can I take guitar? What guitar, what kinds of guitar uh, courses do you have? I say, well, we have classical guitar and we have jazz guitar. We don't have the one in the middle, the commercial guitar. And so what the music industry program has done was to create a degree called, called popular music. So we will offer a degree in popular music, both in, in guitar and piano, voice, all of the instruments. This is another very, very um, important degree to us. It's, it's a natural morphing. And it, it, it should be emphasized that we're not moving away from our core. Our core has always been classical studies, jazz studies. That's still there. That very strong Loyola music core is very much a part of what we do. 
what we have done is to try to bring that same uh, strong knowledge of music, love of music, um, knowledge of music, and how people earn a living in music to create a popular music degree. And what the public should understand is that none of these degrees are in a vacuum. There will be opportunities, for example, where music therapy students um, will might take a popular music degree. Maybe a music ed kid will take a popular music degree. Maybe a classical vocalist would be on stage in, um, in one of the productions in the, in the musical theater productions. We see this as, as an opportunity for us to break down whatever silos we may have had or, or, or the public or even the students may have perceived that we've had, break all those silos down and give our kids an opportunity to maximize their talent and to take that talent and make a living at it. The creative professions here at Loyola are a very, very strong piece of what we do. I've always said, and, and having been a faculty member for so many years, we do a very good job of hiding our light under a bushel basket. We've done an enormously good job of that. But here at Loyola, we offer a number of professions that we can call creative professions. For example, John Biganay's program in creative writing is a creative profession. Here, our kids get an opportunity to work with a world-class playwright, work with plays, develop in plays, see those plays hit the stage. That's a very creative profession. Uh, Bob Thomas's program in, in communica environmental communications, that is a creative profession because you have to crea think creatively about the environment. It's not black and white. And if anyone has ever taken a helicopter trip from New Orleans down to South America or Central America, they will see the importance of being able to write creatively about what the loss of land is to this particular community. It's an enormous, so that's a creative profession. All of music, for example, um, whether it's music therapy, music education, these students are creating. We can teach you so much, but when you're in a classroom or when you're in a clinic, you have to be creative. Things aren't black and white. Kinds, patients, students don't present to you um, out of a textbook. Sometimes they do, but in most of the time, because they're human beings, they're people. And we teach our students to be aware, knowledgeable of people and what the needs of people are. This is extremely creative. And obviously, the area of jazz studies. Our challenge here at Loyola, and I've said this for years, is that um, to keep the jazz studies kids here for four years to get them graduated or hard graduated. Uh, a lot of times they'll get here for the first two years and get opportunities to perform in the community, other, meet other musicians, and first thing you know, Doc, I gotta take a leave of absence, I'm coming back, and, and I said, son, be, <laughs> be very mindful about that. There will always be these opportunities. So our, our challenge in jazz studies is to keep those creative kids on campus. We wanna get them degreed, we wanna get them finished off, so that at later on in their life, when they're in their 30s and their other responsibilities, family and so forth, they are credentialed. They can make the next move. The next move may, back, may be back into academe or may be in a profession that will require that little certificate. Being a professor of music therapy, health and wellness has always been something very important to me. I've tried to conduct myself in terms of my personal health and running and lifting weights and doing all the kinds of things that promote health. Well. Um, in recent weeks, I've been dealing with or accredited questions from our, our accrediting association, the National Association of Schools of Music. NASM has made a very, very focused effort um, at looking at the health care needs of performing artists. For example, if a young kid as a trumpet player in the ninth, a ni uh, in the ninth grade is a, is a trumpet player and he's holding his trumpet during marching band season for a couple hours a day, certainly it may not cause a problem for a 15-year-old. But as that 15-year-old becomes a 25-year-old, then things happen. We need, as a community here at Loyola, to be very cognizant of that. We are aware in terms of voice, we know where we send our students who have uh, vocal issues, who have, may have a bout with laryngitis or nodules or other kinds of um, 
vo voice pathology, we know where to send those kids. We need to codify so that everyone in that particular studio knows what to do. We need to codify for the band and for the orchestra. Where do the orchestra directors need, or band director needs to take his, what to do? We also need to be aware of loudness, in the, the loudness in the environment. For example, if you are sitting in front of the trumpet section in the band for an hour, um, I dare say at the end of that particular hour, if those kids are blowing hard, you might experience what we call temporary threshold shift. That is, when you come out of that environment, your hearing is a bit impaired. A lot of times it will recover, but with repeated exposure, a lot of these things, a lot of these initiatives are making the student aware of how to protect his or her health. Very important. We are thinking very, very hard, and I will share this, this idea with my faculty cadre, that for the 2015 and 16 academic year, we have what is called a montage series. Our montage series is the premier performing season for the, the College of Music and Fine Arts. We have orchestra programs, band programs, outside artists, um, uh, visual artists, lectures, a number of different events, something there for everyone in the community. This year, in, in the year 2015 and 16, we hope to call that the year of uh, wellness, um, wellness in the arts. In this next year, we hope to focus on initiatives that educate our students, the community, about health care for the artist. It could be musculoskeletal health care, it could be vocal health care, it could be any number of things because, and, 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 and to create an awareness of this, our students, like students everywhere, we're so enthusiastic about playing the music, about being on stage, about sculpting. We, that's where the enthusiasm is in the art. What we want them to do is, don't temper the enthusiasm, but we want to include in that enthusiasm a knowledge of wellness. What happens over a number of years performing or sculpting or doing, doing whether even if, if, if you're doing um, digital analysis, if you're at the computer, for example, as a designer, you may spend hours with the mouse, with the computer. What happens to your wrists, your arms, carpal tunnel? We need to make our students aware of this. And so we hope to, we hope to capture some of this knowledge next year with a series of performances, a series of lectures by physicians, sports medicine folks, other people who are knowledgeable about, the, uh, about issues related to the performing arts. What I've always told parents, and, and a lot of we, we're coming up on our uh, first audition, which would be around the 7th of December. And you look out on the stage, you look out on the, the sea of folks in the audience, parents and students, and some parents know why they're there. And other parents will say, how in the world did I get a kid who wants to major in theater? How did I get a kid who wants to major on the flute or the oboe, who wants to play these instruments? Well, my standard response is, is a line from the Fantastics. It says, plant a radish, you get a radish. Well, if you were spending a lot of time taking your students to uh, to theater practice, to dance practice, to band rehearsals, to lessons, private instructions over the course of four or five years or maybe more, it's a pretty good chance you're going to get a kid who really loves the oboe or loves the trumpet or loves the dance or loves to paint or loves to be in theater. So you planted that seed. But I will tell the student, and I've never had a kid come back and tell me over the 30 some odd years I've been teaching, boy, I'm sure sorry I went into music. I'm sure sorry I went in the theater. And parents say, well, what happens if you can't make it? Well, my, my response is sort of pragmatic about that. Uh, I've never met a starving musician because if you get hungry enough, you're gonna find another job, okay? So to the parents, I say, our job here at Loyola is to facilitate the training, is to make the path smoother for the student so that student can realize his own identity, can, can, can really, as Maslow says, can actualize himself a, as an artist. Now, whether that art takes him to the Philharmonic or on the stage, that art might take him to a chamber in the law school, or it may take him to an operating room as, as a physician. 
But we want to give the kid an opportunity to realize that potential. And this is so, so very important. Our job is not to step on dreams. Our job is to enhance them and help them realize the dream. In one sense, selecting a school, selecting a university is, is almost like selecting a pair of shoes. All shoes, no matter how expensive or how cheap, don't fit the same way. And so what I tell students, you do some initial investigating, initial research on the program. I'm interested in music industry. Oh, okay, so I come up with four or five schools that have music industry programs. I'm interested in vocal performance. I look at that. I'm interested in design. I say, okay, I'll look at schools that have these kinds of programs. And always, if the parents have the wherewithal, have the means, I suggest you visit. Don't visit in the summer, visit during the semester. Visit when you can take a class, take a lesson, walk around campus, speak to our students. That is the, that is the strongest advice I can give to anyone. Speak to our students. Our students will give you the, the skinny, the straight skinny on what it is to be a student at Loyola. And, and I say that uh, very proudly. Because I've heard our kids talk, I've heard our kids talk about their experiences at Loyola. And, and if they say they don't like this, that's fine, that's life. You don't like everything, but I would trust them to tell the, give their student, give a prospective student the skinny on what it is to be a student here at Loyola. We define ourselves as a professional school in a liberal arts environment. We think it's important for a student, for example, in the School of Music, to play his or her trumpet or oboe to the best of her, his or her ability. But we also want our student to know, well, where is Sarajevo? What is the struggle like in the Middle East at this point? Why? Why has this occurred? This is part of the Jesuit tradition of educating the whole person. We want our students to be in the discussions about the various world topics to take part in that because you are in a world community. If the, if the new technical era in terms of cell phones and, and iPads and all those things has done anything, it has shown us that we are a community of people, of human beings who are very, very closely connected and who are very close together. What impacts us here in New Orleans can also impact somebody else in, in Wisconsin, say, or, or, or even in Madrid. So it's very important that our students understand that you're not in this by yourself and you should know what other people do. Well, why do they do that? Are they crazy? Well, of course not. But I think it's important that we, we, we stay true to this Jesuit tradition. That is really one of the hallmarks of a Loyola education. Here at Loyola, we have been doing community service since the inception of the university in the 30s. This is, a, this is a, 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 probably a 20th century idea where kids go out into the community and do service learning. When it was first introduced here at Loyola, we sort of laughed about that and said, well, we've been doing that. We've had students in the community for many, many, many years, well before this whole advent of community service was even topical. And, and we want to continue to do that. We want our kids, yes, I want you to play your horn. Yes, I want you to be on stage. Yes, I want you to be able to do all the kinds of things that you do in the world of the arts. But you have to also be aware of the arts' impact on people. We think that the Jesuits have been around for over 500 years. And Ignatius, is, one of his main dictums was understanding people, working with people, um, living for others. That's what we want to create in our students. No, it's not cookie cutter by, by any stretch of the imagination. Living and being for others. How does that, how do you translate in living for others and being for others if, you're, if your degree is in music industry, say for example, if, if you are a rock artist, if you are or a mixer, if you have your own band, how does living for others uh, communicate uh, resonate with your profession. That's very, very important. All of our students take um, a plethora of music, of uh, philosophy courses, religious studies courses, and, and, and other arts courses, history, and, and the rest of those kinds of courses. We think it's important, we think it's important 
for our students to be true to their Jesuit identity. And it's not easy a lot of times. It's not easy taking these courses because they're difficult. We maintain that our students here in the, in the College of Music and Fine Arts probably have more courses or in, in classroom much more than any other student in around the campus and they do very, very well. They also, they excel in the classroom, they excel in the community. Ignatius embraced all people. And so we don't trot students off to mass every day. You can, there, that, that, that option, that is the option to go to mass every day is there if you want to be it, whether you're Catholic or non-Catholic, you are welcome to worship. And we think that welcoming is so important to our students. We don't care if you're Baptist or you're Jewish or whatever. We think it's important that you take the time and reflect. Maybe it means going to sit in the chapel quietly. Maybe it means going across the street in, city, in Audubon Park quietly and reflect on why you're here, why you're doing. We think our Jesuit education gives the students the tools to reflect upon their, 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 human, their humanity. Music has been a tremendous part of my life. I've been singing since I was five years old. I sang at a garden party uh, when, uh, and I sang Nat King Cole's song, Too Young, and uh, it was a hit. Well, music has always been very, very important to me and it still is important to me. I enjoy, I still sing weddings, I still sing funerals. Um, and for me, it's the enjoyment of sharing what you have with other people. A lot of times if I'm singing a funeral, and I may not even know the person I'm singing for, but it gives me, I may be the only person in the whole congregation who has the ability to offer that particular gift to the family. So music is, is very, very important to all of us. Um, it, it helps, it puts perspective in our lives. It helps to focus things. It, 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 it's just important.